Hi, I'm David McCartney. I'm the University Archivist at the University of Iowa. Thank you for joining me. For the next few minutes, I'm going to give you a tour of the archives. I'll point out a few of the highlights of our holdings, and I'll tell you more about how you can contact us and work with us in reviewing those holdings if you have research interests. University Archives is part of the Department of Special Collections and Archives, and we're located on the third floor of the main library at the University of Iowa. The Department of Special Collections and Archives includes the University Archives. The Archives was formed back in 1931. Dr. Ruth Gallagher, uh, an editor for the State Historical Society of Iowa, recognized that many records of the university were being lost to time. By that time, the university was uh, already over 70 years old, and Dr. Gallagher took it upon herself to contact administrators, uh, members of the faculty, collegiate deans, to gather their records for a new repository that was to be formed in the old capital on campus. And it was her intention to make this a permanent repository of the State University of Iowa's a permanent historical record. Now here's an illustration of our central campus. We know it today as the Pentacrest. It has changed a bit since this uh, lithograph was produced back in the uh, 1880s, I believe. And you'll notice at the bottom, the uh, identifier reads Iowa State University. Well, that's not to be confused with our esteemed sister institution at Ames, Iowa, which is indeed known as Iowa State University. Until the 1950s, at least, we were at times nicknamed, uh, or for shorthand, Iowa State University because the other two region institutions, the uh, University of Northern Iowa at Cedar Falls and Iowa State University at Ames, went under different names. Uh, for many years, the uh, uh, institution at Cedar Falls was known as the uh, Iowa State Teachers College. And the institution at Ames was known as the uh, Iowa State College of Agriculture and Mechanical Arts. Well, uh, because of that, it became a habit of administrators and members of the uh, university alike in Iowa City to uh, nickname or shorthand the name of their institution at Iowa City as Iowa State University. So you'll see references to our institution by this name, particularly in the late 19th century in the form of general catalogs and other university publications. And this is one example. This is a front piece from the, uh, I believe the uh, 1881 catalog of uh, course offerings by the uh, State University of Iowa. This is one of my favorite images of the old Capitol. This appears in the, uh, I believe, the 1948 Hawkeye yearbook. I don't know what the film process is called, but the colors are absolutely brilliant. It's my favorite time of year. It's fall uh, at my, uh, uh, one of my favorite uh, vantage points of the university. We're looking at the old Capitol from the west looking up the hill from Iowa Avenue. You wonder why is it the old Capitol? Well, this was a, the built in the 18, around 1839, 1840 as the uh, territorial capital of Iowa when Iowa City was so designated. And following statehood in 1846, the uh, 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 status changed to state capital in Iowa City. And this was indeed the uh, state capitol building until 1857, about a dozen years later, when the capitol was moved west to Des Moines. And as a kind of consolation prize, the uh, state of Iowa needed this, uh, this uh, really elegant uh, uh, landmark to the University of Iowa, which uh, by that time had been organized for only about 10 years with classes beginning only two or three years before the old capital was actually transferred to the uh, Iowa City uh, campus. So that's how the name old capital came into being. And we love our landmarks so much that we preserve records about it in the form of blueprints, photographs, contracts, and other documents. 
Those of you who are from the university might recall that back in 2001, uh, in uh, late November of that year, a construction accident occurred in the old Capitol Dome. And the result was a fire that destroyed the original dome of the uh, 1840 structure. And in an effort to replicate the dome and other features in the cupola as closely as possible during the reconstruction of that period, the uh, uh, administration of President Mary Sue Coleman uh, contacted uh, a number of uh, restoration experts uh, around the nation. An architecture firm in Boston was tasked with the uh, uh, developing the plans for the replacement dome. And it was our honor to work with that firm to present to them digitally uh, via the internet, the blueprints of the uh, old Capitol uh, uh, building plans, the, uh, particularly the uh, exterior design, uh, which were created back in the 1920s during a renovation project. We were able to provide this information to the firm in Boston. It enabled them to create a very, very faithful reproduction of the original dome. And this is how records can become a true asset to the university. Records that hold information about our heritage also hold information that can aid us in the present day as we look toward the future. As I mentioned, we're located on the third floor of the main library. This is the west side of the main corridor of the third floor. And you can visit special collections during walk-in hours, which as of this recording uh, will begin or resume rather on July 1st, 2021. But do check our website for the status of current hours and the availability of space uh, in our reading room. The reading room is where you can conduct research. When you come in, we will check you into our uh, the researcher registration uh, system. We will ask you to leave your uh, coats and bags uh, in an area not far from the front door uh, for security purposes. And we do have a few ground rules. We ask that you not bring food or drink in, uh, but we will provide you with uh, specially colored paper and pencils that you may write with when taking notes. Our staff are on duty from uh, normal, normally from 10 until four, Monday through Friday uh, in the reading room. And you can see we have uh, seating capacity for up to about uh, two dozen people at uh, one time. Again, in normal times, we can permit that many people because of the uh, recent COVID pandemic. We have been restricting that somewhat. The uh, numbers of uh, individuals are limited by reservation, but we hope we can open that up further in the time ahead. We have holdings that range from official university records that originate from uh, central administration to student publications. And this is one of my favorite uh, 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 journals, if you will. This is a publication that was issued annually for uh, over 40 years, the Code for Coeds. Uh, the premier issue was uh, about this time, probably around 1936 or 37. And it was issued by uh, uh, an association of uh, freshman women uh, in Courier Hall for the benefit of incoming freshman women uh, with information about dress codes, codes of conduct, uh, a few uh, tips here and there about uh, best places to study, uh, types of events occurring on campus. And uh, it, it really is a wonderful barometer of student life over a period of uh, 30 to 40 years. By the late 1960s, the code fell out of favor. It became uh, somewhat uh, uh, anachronistic of, of, uh, of the times and uh, was discontinued. But over that uh, 30 to 40 year period, it really does provide a wonderful indication of uh, mores and student conduct of the time. 
we have records pertaining to many traditions on the University of Iowa campus. Homecoming, which uh, began uh, in 1912, uh, more than a 100, 100 year tradition. And this is a uh, program promotional announcement from 1965 that we keep uh, as part of our uh, student life collections in the uh, records of the Homecoming Committee. The University of Iowa is a pioneer in the development of, of uh, designated safe spaces for uh, historically underrepresented communities uh, at a predominantly white institution. It's particularly uh, significant to note that the uh, Afro-American Cultural Center was uh, established in 1968, one of the first centers of its kind in the country. Dean Philip Hubbard, he was the uh, Dean of Students. Um, Dean Hubbard had in early 1968 issued a memorandum to the university administration and to UI student government indicating a need for such a space. And in doing so, he endorsed the uh, uh, designation of of space for the uh, uh, African-American community on campus in response to a number of concerns raised during the mid to late 1960s over the treatment of black students at the University of Iowa. Dean Hubbard, uh, himself an African-American, was the uh, first African-American uh, dean in the Big Ten uh, conference. He was also the University of Iowa's first uh, uh, African-American uh, member of the faculty. He was a professor in the College of Engineering and uh, was named to the faculty in 1947. Uh, 20 years later, in 1967, uh, President Sandy Boyd named uh, uh, Dean, uh, named as Dean uh, Philip Hubbard, uh, Dean of Students. We have records of uh, a number of, uh, of student life experiences. This is uh, uh, particularly uh, interesting photograph from one of our uh, student scrapbook collections of uh, Alpha Kappa Psi. This is a local chapter spring party held in May of 1926. Not many uh, records exist of African-American students' experiences at Iowa. Uh, but this uh, particular collection is one that we're very fortunate and very proud to have. And indeed, it's been fully digitized. It's been digitally reformatted, and you can visit it online in the Iowa Digital Library. Landmarks on our campus are a favorite subject for our uh, researchers, and uh, the Iowa Memorial Union stands out as uh, uh, an example of uh, uh, a great leap forward in the development of the university as, a, uh, uh, as a, a, a social and conference hub, as well as uh, uh, an academy. The IMU was officially dedicated in 19, about 1926. I'm sorry, I don't have the exact date or year, but it was uh, around that time that uh, the original portion of the building had been dedicated. And in this early uh, color postcard, we are looking southwest uh, from the corner of uh, Madison and Market Streets at the bottom of that hill. The Iowa River is, of course, just behind it. Student theater productions, including radio drama performances on WSUI, the uh, university's educational radio station, uh, one of the oldest continuously operating radio stations in the United States. Uh, this is a photograph from a dramatic production in the 1930s. And uh, it was very much an integral part of the uh, program of uh, course offerings in the Department of Theater Arts uh, and later uh, the uh, program in communication studies. Student unrest has been uh, a part of student life on campus, for better or for worse, in, 19, in the 1960s and early 1970s particularly, there were uh, uh, a number of uh, incidents, uprisings, if you will, uh, both on and off campus uh, throughout Iowa City. Usually, uh, 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 well, for the most part, in response to the uh, uh, US administration's 
policy with regard to uh, the war in Southeast Asia. Also, the civil rights era, which gave rise to uh, a number of protests. This particular scene is from news film footage made by uh, Cedar Rapids television station. At the time, it was WMT-TV. Today, it's KGAN. And uh, this is some footage that uh, the uh, University Archives had acquired a number of years ago. And we're looking southeast. This is from uh, Clinton Street. And uh, I believe we are looking at uh, uh, College Street uh, with uh, what was then the first national bank uh, in the background. This might be a familiar face on the uh, left, Jerome Silverman, otherwise known as Gene Wilder, uh, an alumnus of the University of Iowa Theater Arts Program. This is an image from a, a dramatic production made in 1954 in the uh, E.C. Maybe Theater. Uh, Edward Charles Maybe was a very influential uh, uh, director of the uh, theater program here at Iowa for uh, quite a number of years. And his legacy was uh, certainly felt uh, uh, widely and deeply in the regional theater movement of the mid 20th century. The theater building on campus today is named for him. Uh, maybe died only about two years after this photograph was taken. Uh, but, uh, but his legacy certainly from, uh, from that point forward was uh, widely and deeply felt. Like many universities, the uh, University of Iowa did uh, not permit integration in its dormitories until after World War II. This is a photograph uh, depicting uh, uh, the five women. There are six women uh, depicted here. Five of them were part of a cohort that had uh, successfully integrated Courier Hall in the fall of 1946, following World War II. The papers of Esther Walls have considerable documentation of this period, and those papers are housed at the Iowa Women's Archives, which is also part of the uh, University of Iowa Department of Special Collections and Archives. After this uh, uh, occurred, it became clear that the university housing practices needed to change. While there was never language that explicitly prohibited uh, students of color from living in the dormitories, it did become, uh, unfortunately, over a period of time, it was necessary to uh, change what had been a de facto practice, if not uh, a written policy. Our campus newspaper, The Daily Island, is fully online. You go back to uh, 1868, you know, you'll see that The Daily Island at that time uh, was known as The Vedette. That's the original name of the newspaper. It uh, later merged with another campus newspaper and became known as The Vedette Reporter uh, by the uh, uh, late 1800s. And beginning in 1901, uh, The Vedette Reporter became a daily edition known as the Daily Iowan. And it is uh, considered one of the best, if not the best, uh, student newspapers in the nation. It, in recent years, has received numerous awards from the Associated Press and uh, other entities. And we're proud to offer the Daily Iowan online. And here's the URL for it. It's at the bottom of the screen there. It's dailyiowan.lib.com uiowa.edu. And you can search by date. You can search by text, uh, although we are still working on the uh, text feature, uh, searchability feature of that. But, uh, but it is possible to narrow your search by certain terms uh, in the search box at the gateway page of the Daily Iowa Historic Archive online. Our yearbooks are online too. And here's the web address for those. These are part of the Iowa Digital Library. And the homepage for that is digital.lib.uiowa.edu. And to access the yearbooks, add the uh, slash yearbooks to the end of that URL address. 
The Hawkeye Yearbook was published for 100 years, from 1892 until it closed in 1992. And it's a century of, of um, <laughs> just a, a wide range of uh, student life, all kinds of uh, activities, of course, athletics, uh, Greek life, fraternities and sororities are depicted, uh, intramural as well as intercollegiate sports, honor societies, professional societies, senior and junior year portraits, uh, campus activities. They're, they're all very well documented in the uh, Hawkeye yearbooks and we invite you to check those out. The Department of Special Collections and Archives has a very wide and very deep range of material in varying degrees of condition. And when you come in and uh, utilize our materials, we may ask that you uh, handle certain materials with greater care uh, because of their fragile condition. But nonetheless, we strive to provide access to uh, as many of our holdings as, uh, as possible. And we invite you to uh, come to our uh, department and uh, get a first-hand experience. If you have questions, please contact the Department of Special Collections and Archives. Our email address is lib-spec at uiowa.edu. And you can find us on Facebook when you search University of Iowa Special Collections. Thank you very much for joining us. I enjoyed the time uh, sharing with you our holdings, a very, very small tip of the iceberg of our holdings, but uh, do explore our website and you can find that simply by Googling University of Iowa Archives. And we'll be more than happy to help answer any questions you may have. Thank you again for your time and, uh, and enjoy doing your research.